Hello, DigiDestins. This is Kyle D, better known as Ride My Avatar, bringing you my Mega Zoo deck profile. I know I haven't been really doing much on the tournament scene, but I have been doing a lot of locals. I have a spicy deck I'm going to be playing on into the Geekitu tournament tomorrow, so it's going to be really spicy. You're going to have to watch and see. Hopefully, you guys enjoy it, and I hope you guys tune in for that. Follow me on Twitch. I will be live streaming that. Um, I know I haven't been uploading regularly. There's been a lot going on in my life. I am sorry, like, but I'm going to try to get back on my regular schedule as we slowly start ticking towards our set four stuff and the trial decks. I can't wait. I'm excited for the upgrades to purple that's going to come, but let's dive into the amazing profile that I got for you today. So as I promised, I was going to get to my purple, um, my mega zoo list. So mega zoo, we run... Our starter is only four. We run four Demi Vmon. So when this Digimon when jamming trigger, draw one. So again, we use it to be able to draw one card, especially when we need it. Because again, being able to swing in with Vmon with jamming, just gaining us a draw advantage sometimes does help out because we don't really evolve enough in this deck to pretty much justify anything else. So we have four Vimon with jamming, by the way, because he is a threat on his own, because jamming on a rookie just makes it really impossible for your opponent to deal with, especially being able to digivolve on top of Demi Vimon and just be able to keep swinging makes your opponent have to do threat analysis. And again, being able to force your opponent to have to kill off the Vimon early sometimes is just enough to push them into a game loss. So, we do play two Zambaramon. So Zambaramon is a really nice card. So reveal the top five cards of your deck to add one Ragnalord Digimon card and one card with legendary arms in its type among them to your hand. Place the remaining cards at the bottom of your deck at any order. So again, we use it to hopefully get a plus one or plus two on its on play, especially when we're playing early game. Um, being able to just play this and try to plus is really nice. We kind of want to grab cards we need. Next, we do play in the ultimate line. Very interesting text. So first off, we play three Infermons. So the fact of the matter is Infermon is really nice because on play, trigger delish, uh, digi, di, di, digivolve one. On one of your opponent's Digimon, trash the top card. If it becomes a level three, you can't trash anymore. I kind of wish it went down more so you could remove a rookie off board or anything like that that would be really nice but uh you know you have to put some limitations on black apparently so i mean i kind of wish they would change it so that you could the did you ball them back to their um baby form would be really nice and then we play one doranamon because the fact of the matter is we do we are a ragnar lord deck so the fact of the matter is his inheritable helps us, especially with Omnimons and any other thing. So again, later on, being able to use a Security Plus stack is just really nice. And he's searchable by Zambaramon. And he's just an easy evolve target for our Ragnar Lord pieces. So first off, we do play four Doranamon and again, four Brylutamon. They both have inheritables. They're both 10Ks. They're both really good to want to be seen. So the fact of the matter is we want both of them. So one has blocker. The other one gives you pierce. So being able to have pierce and blocker just really does help out very nicely. You want to be able to see these cards. So you do play them at a full play set. Because again, you can do all for pretty much free. And then your opponent has to deal with a Ragnar Lord mod or your big guys or anything like that with pierce blocker anything like that just can get really annoying really quickly and your opponent gets fed up pretty fast um next we play four volcandramon and if you don't know what volcandramon's in here for he is literally in here for the fact of the matter is to be his on play so delete all your opponent's digimon with 4000 dp or less and security plus one He's really nice in the rookie rush matchup because you're going to be mostly killing things and be able to drop it and then go right into um, 
our big boy Alter S or um, Omnimon just really does help out because again being the red target is what we need. Next we play three Machine Dramon. So the fact of the matter is if you don't know what Machine Dramon is he is a blocker 12k. So again blocker and then triggers DG Evolution on two of your opponent's Digimon bringing them down. Sometimes that's just enough to remove a big threat that you had to worry about. Um, just being able to be a blocker that is very tough to remove is just sometimes really good. Um, next, we do play two Phoenixmon, where the fact of the matter is we want to use our Gaia Forces, and he's just a fancy 12k. Being able to swing into security and putting him down for 10 is just really nice. Next, we play Karanimon in. So Cranemon's in here for red, and that's about it, to be honest with you. He's in here for red matchup or the security matchup that isn't going to be killing your stuff with minus effects. So again, Cranemon helps protect. He is a threat target on his own. So again, being a blocker and making your blockers can't be deleted. Since we do play Machine Dramons, we play the um, ability blocker gainer. So this now helps you in the long run. And again, he can be a cheap evolution onto your Infirmons. So that, again, you have an evolutionary target for four. Now you have a big blocker underneath it. You can block stuff. They're now not going to swing in for a little bit because of the fact is he is a 12k base. And most did you, they're not going to trade off right away. So again, they're going to hold off until the last very second. Next, we do play one Puppet Mon. Um, Puppetmon's in here for the fact of the matter is when we see Puppetmon, uh, spend one of your opponent's Digimon during your opponent's next unsuspend phase. None of your opponent's Digimon can unsuspend, gain one memory when attacking. Just in case they are limiting us, we can at least put it to a game state we like. We don't want to be slowed down too much, so again, this allows us to speed back up. So next, we do play Magna Dramon. For the fact of the matter is being able to recover two when we're at three or less. Um, again, Magna Dramon's on attacking seal doesn't go off in this deck. So again, there's very little time you'll ever see this go off. So next, we do play a few. We are now going to level sevens. First off, we do play Ragna Lordmon at a full playset. So again, the beauty of Ragna Lordmon is that it being able to have a security plus reboot, making it so that if you do put the blocker underneath it, He's going to be restanding. He's a 14k blocker. Your opponent really can't do much against it. So when did you evolve? You may place one of the arms, the megas, underneath it. And then congratulations, boys and girls. You gain three memory out of that trade. So again, luckily, you can digivolve on top of a Machine Germon. Or you can digivolve on top of your Craniumon doesn't matter what you do, as long as it's there. You can Digivolve on top of it. You're just going to be really much in a good spot. Next, we do play three Millennium on in this deck because Millennium on is really good. Be able to rewind something and just be able to handle your own. Um, just really nice. He's beefy. He doesn't take trash from anybody. So again, you definitely want to see Millennium on be able to return himself. Sometimes just helps and being able to make him a blocker sometimes is just nasty in its own right because again It comes back. So if they kill it, it's coming back Next we do play Three alter s's for the sake of the matter of our rookie rush matchup We can literally clear boards and make people cry. So trigger DG evolution one and then trash a card from the top of your Digimon if it has no Digi-Evolution or becomes a level 3 Digimon, you can't trash any more cards. Then delete all your opponent's Digimon with 5,000 or less DP. I wish it was 6,000. It would be really nasty. Um, if you make a Digimon, um, you can make this Digimon unblock while you're turning one of your level 6s back to hand. Really nice to finish out games, especially if you're facing black or something like that. You can just swing in and not care. Again, being able to get that final push attack is really nice. Then we play three Omnimons because Omnimon is really nasty especially because choose one of your opponent's Digimon delete all your opponent's Digimon that shares a name with that that Digimon um you can unsuspend this Digimon by reducing one of this Digimon's 
by returning one of the level sixes. So again, being able to return itself, cheap evolution, six cost, you know, Omnimon's Omnimon. They're going to cry if they see it. Next, we do play three Gaia Forces because why not? Gaia Force is one of the best options in game. They, there's not many outs to it. Um, most people cringe when they see it in security or if you hard play it. Again, you want to see it in security more. You could play Kakaitis Breath because, again, there are going to be situations where you might they might kill off your red too easily. But what's really nice is if you can get Zabaromon on or Garanamon on or Ragnalord Mon out, you know, your Gaia Forces are active the whole game. Or even if you can get Phoenix Mon out, they're, they're always going to try to kill the red source. But if, what's nice is that you can bait them into killing it. So, again... You can hold up Gaia Force, you can play Phoenix Mon. They're going to want to kill Phoenix Mon as soon as possible because they're going to think you're playing Gaia Force in your hand, but then you're holding on to Zabaromon, so they're going to pretty much Digivolve, do their thing, then kill the Phoenix Mon, not realizing you're going to drop Zabaromon, drop the Gaia Force, then they're kind of in a bad spot. Again, that's what happens in most cases and then we do play kaiser nail really good option in the security if you do have board presence being able to get a machine Dramon off a second time a volcan Dramon off for free a puppet mon off for free on your opponent's turn is just nasty again and being able to stop them in the tracks is really good um even just pulling out a karenium on out just to slam down for a blocker or getting Doranamon out i mean infermon out just to d did evolve something Sometimes just helps out immensely because again now their big thing is no longer as big as they need to be So now the potential of death is higher because again, what's nice is let's say the first security check is Kaiser nail You had a Karenium on out you let it take it and for bonds underneath Well in that middle of combat you call out you need evolve it now. They're only at 10k They have this security plus check you flip over another big guy congratulations it died so the trade-off was really nice where you didn't you might not have gotten that chance because again what if you're facing Omnimon? Omnimon swings in um hits the kaiser nail um Omnimon with second security check or whatnot or even a ragnar lord mon swings in congratulations they're in the middle of the attack so they can't stop it um Ragnar Lord Mon's the exception because, again, it's on the top of its card, not in the Inheritables. If it was in the Inheritable, it's fine. It will continue. Um, if Omnimon has the Inheritable X security, it'll continue. So, again, now if they bounced it, just to restand it. Now it's down to a ultimate 8k. Now it swings in, dies. Now they don't gain. They didn't really gain anything. They tried to kill off, they cost them two security, which is what they want to do. But again, things against red, that just makes us nasty. Because again, most people can't swing into our security willy-nilly. Because they're going to lose something in, their, in it, no matter what they're going to do. Um, unless they have jamming, that's the only exception. So guys, this is the Mega Zoo deck profile you guys have been begging for. So definitely catch me in the Geeky 2 tournament. Remember, if you got to the end... Please like, comment, subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next video. Peace!